Hi there folks, my name's Tom, you're watching High Rant District. Uh, this video is going to be a uh, contribution to a thread that uh, Vinyl Richie called me out on as far as somebody who should make a video about this. It's basically a contest uh, thread for uh, TKR Video Central, uh, who ha was having a push to get to 200 subscribers. Von Richie did this video a couple of weeks ago. At this point, you know, being that he is the uh, kingmaker that he is, Vinyl Richie has caused that channel to double his subscriptions. So he's over 400 now. So anyway, um, I'm not doing this as part of the contest, uh, but I'm going to do this as a thread response to the TKR Video Central. Ten obscure records that uh, nobody else in the VC has. I, I, I like the idea of the concept of 10 records that nobody else on the VC has. Uh, theoretically, it kind of lets people show the flavor of their collection. Um, instead of everybody showing the exact same thing all the time, you know, I think you get a little bit more personal and let probably, you know, a little bit more uh, local. Anyway, where I'm taking this is kind of be is going to be kind of a reflection of different places I've lived in some place in with some of these records um, other records I'm, not, I'm trying not to make this be like completely obscure I do want to sh I'm gonna have a couple in here that I don't think anybody in the VC has but they might so I'm not trying to make this completely off the wall anyway uh, enough talking about nothing without showing records let's show some records uh, first record I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show uh, these first uh, bunch are going to be seven inch records. The first one is The Bass Holes with Hey OJ. <laughs> this is uh, this is what out of 1995 on in the red in the red records. Uh, Bass Holes are a um, Columbus, Ohio, I believe, band, and. Uh, I, I kind of dug this because, you know, O.J. Simpson, you know, is one of the greatest running backs in Buffalo Bills history. Uh, he was accused of uh, killing his wife, Nicole, and I think also Ron Goldman, um, and found not guilty in a jury by a jury of his peers. That's what the back cover looks like. You know, it was... Uh, it was terrible seeing, uh, you know, such a storied athlete be unjustly accused of a crime he was found not guilty of. Um, again, he was accused of killing his cheating wife and her boyfriend that she was cheating with and driving around in OJ's car with. Um, so you should never, ever kill people, even if they're cheating on you and uh, driving around with their new boyfriend in your car. Um, even though I understand why you would want to do it, uh, I'm glad that he was found not guilty of doing it. Bass Holes, hey OJ. Next up is, uh, oh, I should go back to this for a second. So Columbus in Ohio, um, I don't think I've ever been to Columbus, but I did used to go to Cleveland a lot, which is to the east of Columbus. And uh, a lot of good music came out of Came out of Ohio. Uh, very punky. This is kind of garagey. But uh, used to road trip a lot to Ohio when I lived in Buffalo, New York. Uh, this is Help. Another 7 inch with uh, it's, uh, The Devil is a Snake. Backed with uh, Pennies on the Ground. This came out a couple years ago, 2019, I believe. This is a punk band out of Portland, Oregon, where I live now. Next up. This is an old record by a fairly popular band. It's Perubo. Perubo. Perubo with uh, 30 Seconds Over Tokyo on Hearthen. Now, I'm showing this is the original version with the picture sleeve. There's plenty, a lot of versions out there without the picture sleeve. So I don't think anybody has this with the picture sleeve. It's from 1975 on... Uh, Parthen. Forgot what it was backed with. Backed with uh, 
Heart of Darkness. Next up, I don't think anybody in the, in the VC, although Vinyl Richie might, has the original Poison Idea Filth Kick EP. Uh, they do a cover, cover of uh, New Rose by The Damned. Uh, we've also got Ballad of a Pre-Op, Hangover Heart Attack, and Drug Revival. Poison Idea, another Portland punk band. It's from 1980... Doesn't say on this. 88, I believe. And uh, on Shit Fool Records. Uh, next up, we have a hardcore punk band out of San Francisco. Spit Boy... Uh, Mi Cuerpo is Mio, and this is on Allied Recordings. It's got uh, the songs Removal Word Problem and Touch. This was an all-female band, uh, politically oriented out of San Francisco. Uh, this came out in 1994. All right, again, another place that I've lived. This is, uh... A split seven inch. We've got Rainbow Sugar, which is the three ladies on one side. Uh, they were doing uh, If Not Love. This is from 2000 on uh, Wonder. What the hell was it? Oh, Wonderground Records. So that's Rainbow Sugar. Um, and then on the flip side, we have Wesley Willis, who's right there. Wesley Willis uh, doing uh, Stop Driving Like an Asshole and It's Time to Rock, It's Time to Roll. Let's look at the label. So I saw these at, uh, what the hell was it called, in Denver. When I lived in Denver, uh, I saw both these bands. Uh, you know, Wesley Willis just plays solo. Uh, Rainbow Sugar uh, were sort of, uh, oddly enough, th all, you know, three ladies, uh, hip hop uh, band. Uh, didn't do much. I also have a cassette of theirs, but, uh, you know, great. You know, they were great. Uh, I love the passion. The music was excellent. Uh, you know, one of their songs on a cassette is a real earworm. But, uh, and then Wesley Willis. Wesley Willis was like a 350-pound guy out of Chicago um, who uh, had suffered from schizophrenia. His thing was, and I think you'll see, you can kind of see the middle of his forehead. His thing was headbutting people. I mean, just like out of affection. So uh, me and a buddy went to see the uh, to see him, and uh, and his songs are hilarious. You just got to listen to them. All the songs are kind of the same, but it's hilarious and he's lovable. And I remember being at the bar, and you know, before he came on, he had this big booming voice as I'm in the john taking a piss, going, Whistley's dick needs to piss. I said, like, what the fuck? And then later on, I see uh, Wesley Willis at the bar with my buddy, just kind of head-butting him. Hilarious. You know, really nice guy. <coughs> Excuse me. He passed. He did pass away. Uh, I don't know exactly what from, but uh, he, had a, he had a tough time. Uh, his thing was riding the bus. Uh, he, I think he used to call it the like the Joy Ride Bus or the, the Joy Love Bus, something like that. He liked just riding around. And writing lyrics. Uh, good soul. He, he is missed. Uh, now we'll show some LPs. We've got uh, Grayskull with Bloody Radio. I don't think anybody in the VC has this. So this is a, uh, I think a Seattle area uh, conscious uh, rap album. Hip hop. Uh, it's very, very smooth. I was drawn to it because of Andrea Zolo, who's featured on one of the songs, uh, she was the lead singer, the primary singer anyway, for um, Pretty Girls Make Graves, who were, you know, Seattle area band that I saw a lot in Portland over the years, um, and I dug them a lot, so this is sort of related to me seeing them live where I live. Uh, this is on uh, Rhyme Sayers. Yeah, Rhyme Sayers from 2007. Next up, the Pegasonics, Garage Ra uh, Well, at this point, this record is kind of new wave, tangentially punk. From 1980 on Trelane Records, uh, the Pegasonics, 
doing uh, the album's called New New York. Uh, they were fronted by Mark Freeland, who uh, in Buffalo he was well known. He did uh, he, he put out a lot of music. He was very prominent on the scene in punk and industrial. Um, and he passed away a bunch of years ago. I can't remember what I, I don't recall what he passed away from, but uh, I remember. Just randomly, I was at a free concert in downtown Buffalo once, and he just kind of stumbled up to me wearing, you know, kind of really out of it, you know, just kind of snot, just running from his nose, leaning on a cane, wearing a kilt, and I don't even remember what we talked about. I couldn't, I couldn't make out half of what he was saying. Uh, but another good soul, you know, and I don't exactly know what he passed away from, but he always did seem kind of high. Uh, but just like really loved music, you know, very very into the uh, the Buffalo music scene, punk, industrial. Music. I mean, he lived music. Um, I seem to recall that he got. Um, there's a story about how he got fucked over by Johnny Resnick of the Goo Goo Dolls after the Goo Goo Dolls uh, turned into a soft rock band and got big. I think um, Johnny at one point had bought um, some artwork because Mark Freeland was an artist as well. And maybe never came, never paid it, you know, before he passed away. It's unsubstantiated as far as I know, but not out of the realm of possibility if you know the characters involved. Anyway, Pegasonics with uh, New New York. Let's look at the backside. Another record I don't see anybody in the VC showing is uh, Mod Billy by a band called The Box Masters. Fronted. Uh, one of the front people, Billy Bob Thornton. And, you know, you kind of think maybe, ah, uh, you know, some celebrity doing music, this is bullshit. It's country. It's uh, excellent country. It's straight-up country with some caustic lyrics. Uh, it's not pop country, not yeah, which is not country. That's pop music. It's actual real country music. It's phenomenal. I like that. I really enjoy the Boxmasters. And the last one I'm going to show uh, is... called Patah, the Eldowd. Uh, this is an Alice Coltrane album from 1970 on Elm Pulse and ABC. I think it's from 1970. Uh, well, that's what I'm going with. Uh, it features also uh, Faroe Sanders and uh, Joe Henderson. Yeah, my teen years were spent on Long Island, New York. Uh, and this album, I believe, was recorded after her husband, John Coltrane, passed away. Alice Coltrane, raising, I think, three kids by herself, recorded this album. It was recorded in her home in the basement studio while she's, you know, lost her husband and raising three kids on Long Island. And to me, that's just badass. You know, it's got it's an interesting album. It's avant-garde. Uh, features a lot of harp in here. I think she's on piano too. Uh, it's a really interesting record, and you know, I admire the person, and I, I do enjoy the record. Oh, here's one. A look of her. Look at her on uh, harp. Uh, this is a uh, original. It's not a whole lot of these out there. It's one of those records that's kind of that's just hard to find. I mean, it is a jazz record, but. I want to say the master tapes were supposedly lost in a fire at her home. You know, she held on to the tapes. I think the home caught fire. I mean, I, I, that's, I don't trust my memory that great, but I think that was the situation. So there's no original master tapes of this. So uh, not likely to get a, a reissue unless somebody does a needle drop reissue. And maybe those exist, maybe they don't, I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's a little jazz. Outside of the, uh, you know, the same jazz everybody shows because reasons. Anyway, there you go. Ten records that uh, nobody else in the VC has. I don't think. If you got them, you got them. If you don't, you don't. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.